Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video focuses on a rather unique missile, one which resembles the earlier US Sidewinder variants, but is substantially different and vastly improved in its performance. This missile is Iran's Azaraksh multi-role short-range air-to-air missile family. The origin and basis for the Azaraksh missile is the US AIM-9 Sidewinder design specifically the P variant acquired by Iran in the 1970s. The Sidewinder was gradually improved to the M variant, and up to the extensively redesigned AIM-9X, employed by US air power today. When the AIM-9M and AIM-9X are compared, the performance characteristics of the later Azaraksh variants bear a closer resemblance to the advanced AIM-9X. However, the primary objective for Iran was to develop a low-cost missile platform capable of serving many different weapon systems and roles. The intention was for this single, cost-efficient missile to fulfill roles in air-to-air -air missions, surface-to-air missions, and even air-to-ground engagements. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel in the algorithm. Now let's start. The Azaraksh is an all-aspect, high off bore site capable missile equipped with an gimbaled imaging infrared seeker, possessing high instant turn capability along with an up-and-down data link and a modern radial laser proximity fuse. In contrast to the advanced AIM-9X and other modern air-to-air -air missiles, the most noticeable difference is the absence of a jet vane thrust vector control system. This feature does enable drastic course corrections during the few seconds following launch, when the thrust vector control system is still active. Consequently, as was pioneered by the Soviet R-73 air-to-air missile, the AIM-9X can maneuver towards the rear hemisphere to engage targets located even behind the launching fighter jet. A common misconception is that the thrust vector control system always provides the missile with added end game agility to hit the target, allowing it to pull turns at higher G-forces than would be possible using only aerodynamic steering surfaces. In reality, however, this system mostly serves to provide an initial alignment of the missile toward its target after which it is rapidly eroded by the aluminum particles within the missile booster's solid propellant. At the very latest, once the rocket motor ceases its burn after around 5 seconds, the thrust vectoring system will no longer have any effect on the missile's turning capability. Other air-to-air -air missiles, such as the Israeli Python 5, avoid the use of a thrust vector control system for initial alignment, while claiming to achieve a very similar initial turn capability through their aerodynamic steering fins alone. Hence, when cost and complexity are taken into account, a thrust vector control system with an operational time of merely seconds is not an obligatory feature for creating a modern air-to-air -air missile. Interestingly, the Israeli Python 5 missile is capable of the same rear aspect instant turn engagement capability as the R-73 and the AIM-9X, and most likely the advanced Azaraksh variants too. However, when compared to the Python 5, the latest Azaraksh variant features a more advanced aerodynamic and steering design. Older missiles, such as the Python 5 and the AIM-9M, utilize what is known as passive roll damping. The Sidewinder achieves this using so-called rollerons, while missiles like the French Magic 2 and the Python 5 use a tail fin stabilizer that is free to rotate in the roll axis. Yet, a characteristic of modern air-to-air -air missiles is their independence from such passive stabilization, relying instead on a more effective active roll stabilization handled by their steering fins. Missiles like the Python 5 and the Iron Dome's Tamer missile employ an additional, separate fin, specifically for roll control to enhance their turn capacity and agility. However, more modern missiles such as the AIM-9X and Iran's Azaraksh missile utilize only the four necessary steering fins, either at the front or at the rear, with each fin separately controlled by an advanced electromechanical servo motor that is both powerful and sufficiently compact to fit within the constrained 127mm airframe diameter. In contrast, all Sidewinder variants up to the AIM-9M, the French Magic 2, and the Israeli Python 5 possess only two large actuators, each of which moves a pair of two linked control surfaces, this small yet critical detail serves as one example of why subsystem miniaturization is of the greatest importance for creating modern air-to-air -air missiles. 
For Iran's Azarakh missile, development was enabled not only by mastering miniaturized electromechanical servo actuators, but also by seeker miniaturization, alongside the development of a sufficiently low-cost inertial measurement unit for active three-axis control that fits within the small diameter and is economically viable for a missile in this price category. Iranian gimbaled imaging infrared seekers, previously used on larger missiles such as Iran's Hellfire copy, the Gayam-114, were incrementally improved to fit the 130mm diameter of the ALMA's fiber-optical anti-tank guided missile. Ultimately, a suitable grade of miniaturization was achieved to incorporate the seeker into the Sidewinder's airframe used by the Azarakh. One aerodynamic penalty the Azarakh has is its round, relatively flat nose tip, which is less aerodynamic than the smaller nose tip of the AIM-9P. But similar penalties are common for modern short-range air-to-air missiles that feature a gimbaled, high off-bore sight imaging infrared seeker. The Azarakh 1 and 2 variants directly copied the US AIM 9P layout, which was already highly optimized due to the several generations of Sidewinder missile development. However, the subsequent improved Azarakh variant departed from the AIM 9P layout. This redesign was enabled by supersonic wind tunnel testing and simulations to create a configuration where not only the drag inducing rollerons were eliminated, but the complete tail fin stabilizator design was modified and downsized to function optimally with the canard only steering and roll control. The enlargement of the canards allowed for a better turn capacity. The aerodynamic steering and stabilization design of the Azarakh is rather unique because the pitch, yaw, and roll axes are controlled solely by the forward canard fins. The only other well known missile with such a configuration is the Japanese AAM 3 air to air missile, developed in the late 1980s which possessed very prominent and unusual-looking forward canards. It incorporated many innovative technologies, but ultimately failed to compete against the AIM-9 Sidewinder due to its twice higher cost. That missile used the so-called bank-to-turn method for roll stabilization to enable its canard-only steering configuration. However, the Azarakh is understood to possess a miniaturized low-cost MEMS-based three-axis inertial measurement unit that permits the use of the higher turn capacity conventional skid-to-turn roll control method. This same inertial measurement unit also enables the missile with a lock-on after launch capability, which, when combined with the missile's up and down link antennas, enables the missile to be launched towards the rear hemisphere. Then it can subsequently lock on to the target once entering the seeker's field of view after the missile completes a 180-degree turn. Provided this missile feature is supported by the launching aircraft, even launches from within an internal weapons bay become feasible. Whether this man-in-the-loop guidance capability also enhances the seeker's robustness against countermeasures, such as flares, is a relevant question. If the seeker incorporates an image recognition algorithm capable of distinguishing the shape of the target from that of a flare, a late lock-on to the target can drastically improve the seeker's effectiveness against such countermeasures. This capability also allows the missile to be employed against ground targets when necessary. An advanced helmet-mounted sight would enable both off-bore sight engagements and support the man-in-the-loop lock-on after launch capability, a field which Iran is currently working on. Given that both the Sidewinder and the Azarakh are very light missiles, they require a highly effective fuse and warhead to ensure target destruction. To achieve this, the Azarakh is equipped with a high sensor count radial laser proximity fuse, which is believed to trigger a directional warhead for improved lethality. Iran's choice of the Sidewinder platform as the basis for the Azarakh originates from its low-cost design and the earlier fatter air-to-air -air missile project. This was a 1990s initiative by the Iranian Air Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization to refurbish Sidewinder missiles nearing their expiration date by developing a newly produced motor for retrofit. This came alongside improvements to the infrared guidance seeker, fully digitalizing it. The fatter one is believed to have been the first Iranian infrared missile with all aspect engagement capability. One feature of its Azarakish descendant improvements continued to the fatter two modification in the 2000s, believed to feature a smokeless motor. Consequently, many components of the Sidewinder had already been reverse-engineered, and subsystems like the motor booster were already in production.
These factors established the Sidewinder as the preferred platform for a future all-Iranian air-to-air -air missile, which would become the Azaraksh. Whether other air-to-air -air missiles Iran has access to, like the advanced Soviet R-73, or the French Magic II, or its Chinese copy, the PL-8 with its gimbaled seeker had influence on the Azaraksh program remains unknown. Cost considerations of those larger and more complex missiles likely meant that their influence remained low. Azaraksh utilizes the mentioned smokeless propellant, in contrast to the AIM-9P, which is a useful advantage in close air combat. The production of the missile for the Iranian Air Force, and its use by drones of the Air Defense Force, guaranteed a substantial initial order from these two forces. Furthermore, the missile was also incorporated into the Azaraksh named short-range surface-to-air missile system, which further increased production volumes and reduces unit costs. The attractiveness of a single missile type that can be deployed on fighter jets, on drones for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions, as well as surface-to-air missile systems, provides the armed forces with an interchangeable unified weapon that could be utilized by any of these branches under wartime conditions, where such munitions can become scarce. The Azaraksh SAM system will receive its own dedicated video in the near future. In summary, the Azaraksh is a modern air-to-air -air missile possessing all the features characteristic of new generation of short-range air-to-air missiles. Yet, it remains a low-cost weapon, consistent with Iran's doctrine of high-cost effectiveness. It can be deployed across many different platforms and represents a viable export product for countries that previously used the US Sidewinder. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.